Welcome, welcome, welcome to Amplify Student Voice. My name is Desiree Alexander. Hopefully you have signed in by now. If you haven't, you do have throughout the whole session to sign in. When you sign in, that gets you your certificate at the end. On the Twitter, I am at Educator Alex. You can also sign up for the monthly newsletter that has a whole bunch of freebies and things like that right at the top of my website. We have people here from Austin, Tennessee, Houston, Arizona, California. We're all, Louisiana, we're all over the place today and I love it. We're all here to learn about student voice. So let's get started. So I'm Desiree Alexander. I'm the Regional Director for North Louisiana for an educational nonprofit called APAL. I'm also the founder CEO of Educator Alexander Consulting. And that just brings me around the globe doing this teaching teachers, training teachers, mentoring teachers, learning from teachers. It really is my passion, is everything that I wanna do um, in my life. So if you have a question about anything um, like that, of course you can always use me as a contact. I'll give you all of my contact information in a second. And that second has arrived. So here is all of my contact information. If you want to take a picture of your screen, if you want to do a screenshot, if you want to say, hey, Desiree, email that to me. I can do that too. Um, so there you go. I will tell you while we're at this screen that you, we have a group chat open. So definitely get in that group chat, talk to each other, talk to me. You can also unmute your mic anytime. Don't worry about interrupting me. This is, this is about you learning. So you can take, um, take over the mic and ask a question or tell us a comment or tell us how you did things, and we're all about it. All right, so the resource that we're going to be using today is G Class Voice. So B-I-T-L-Y, G Classroom Voice. So if you're on a computer, you can go over there, or you can, again, you can just take a picture of the screen or however you wanna do that. I will tell you that the email that I send after this will have this link in it. It'll have my contact information in it. So you'll be fine to make sure that you get this link. So what is student voice? When we think about student voice, and I'm guessing you're here because either you wanna learn more about bringing out the student voice of your students, or are you just brand new and you're just like, hey, I wanna know what this is all about. So when we talk about student voice, we really are talking about giving your, student, giving your students a voice in their own education, letting them control aspects of their own education, letting them be involved in their own education. It is not a new concept, but it has become more and more popular recently, which is beautiful because we want to, we've been talking about being student centered for so long. So when we're talking about student voice, we want to make sure that our students can use their voice in our individual classrooms. And one of the things I like to point out when I'm talking about student voice is you can inspire student voice, you can motivate it, you can stimulate it, you can encourage it, you can support it, you can cheer them on, you can amplify it, you can have them feel safe while they're using it. The one thing that I, you cannot do to a student voice is give it to them. All of your students already have a voice. So I want us to stop saying, I gave my students a voice. You didn't give them anything, right? We are trying to bring it out of them. We are trying to inspire them to use it. We want to make sure that they're safe and that they feel like they can use their voice, but we're not giving them anything. So I, I, I kind of cringe when I hear people say, oh, I gave my students a voice. No, no, your students always had a voice. You are just doing all of these things to bring it out of them and to let them feel safe while they're using it. So, our session today is what technology can I use to help bring out student voice? And I did have a couple of people, uh, well, I actually had a person email me questions, so I'm loving that, thank you. Um, so we're gonna go through some of those questions. Some of the questions will be answered as we go through, but like I 
I replied to the email, I don't want to be the only one answering these questions, right? Um, I want to give my students a voice. So we're going to talk together about these questions and about any tech tool that I show you as well. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to end this and we're going to hop over to my website. So that link that I gave you, and I will give it to you at the end, so if you're coming a little late, that is okay. I'm going to give it to you at the end. So on my website, um, if you just go to educatoralexander.com, you'll find this under Presentations, Teaching, Amplify Student Voice. But I gave you a direct link to it. Right at the top is a podcast and um, someone interviewed me about student voice. So that's a nice little um, interview podcast to listen to as you're driving or anything like that. So how I separate this class is I put it into the different tools that your students may want to use to amplify their voice. So we have drawing tools, we have voice tools, we have writing tools, we have participation tools, video tools, and collaboration tools. So what I mean by tools and you know writing tools, voice tools, drawing tools, is these are the tools that your students can use in the classroom to help bring out their student voice. So for my students who are um, very artsy, they, they may not be able to write that essay for you effectively they may not want to stand up they may not want to do a video but man if you tell them to draw and create they're there for it right um or you know even for my students who may be artsy but not too artsy if that makes sense um i feel like i'm creative but i will draw stick people for you every single time um so the first two tools i'm going to show you are for those students. The students that want to be um, artsy, they, they have that in their soul, but they may need just a little help to do so. So the first one I'm gonna show you is auto draw. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on auto draw and it leads me to this screen. So notice I have my toolbars over here and I'm not gonna go too deep, deep into any one of these just because of time and I wanna make sure we get through most of them, maybe not all of them, but most of them. Um, but I am going to show you kind of quickly how you can just quickly start using and introduce it to your student. And remember, we have our chat box and you can always unmute yourself. So this is auto draw. So for auto draw, I'm going to use my auto draw tool and notice it's on blue, but I have some other colors I can use. And I'm going to draw you a house because maybe we were talking about the three little pigs and you asked me a question about what protected the three little pigs and maybe i want to draw a house for you not the best house a little shaky right oh that's really long all right but notice what it's doing when i'm drawing lines if it can kind of see the line, it'll make the line a little bit straighter for me. But this is the magic of auto draw up here. So because I'm drawing a house, it's giving me all types of examples of houses that I can use. So I'm gonna say, you know what? Yep, this is the type of house that I want it. I'm just going to click it and now I have a house. I know, you're sitting there like, what? I can make it bigger or smaller. I can move it where I want to move it. So now I'm going to draw a car. I think my cars are a little bit worse than my houses. Oh goodness. It's like, oh no. Looks like a flag or some kind of, I don't know what this is supposed to be. All right. So there you go. <laughs> Put some wheels on it. Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, you get the point. All right, so that's my car. So notice up here is putting all types of cars for me. So I'm gonna say, yep, this is the car that I wanted. Awesome. So now I have a car. And I can always come here. I'm gonna change that car to red. There you go. So there you go. A whole bunch of stuff that I can do with auto draw. You have text where they can type in. You have 
fill color. I guess I should have put that one like that. So you can make it a little bit more artistic. So I'm drawing a circle. There you go. And I can come fill that with, let's say, blue. Well, whatever. All right. So there you go. So that's um, auto draw. It can really help your students express themselves visually, even if they're not the best at drawing. Make Believe Comics is one of my favorites. So what Make Believe Comics does is it allows your students to create a comic strip. So think about your students who, again, may not be the best at writing that essay, but they still are good at storytelling. They can do it, they just can't do it in paragraph form. Or I, I don't wanna say can't, of course they can, but they are not the best at doing it in paragraph form right now. So you can give them other outlets to express themselves and to use their voice. And one of those outlets is Make Believe Comics. So I'm gonna come here and just say, create your own comp, create your comics. So I get three panels. Notice that the max is 18. So um, I can come here to add more panels or delete a panel. Yes, if I want to. So I'm gonna come and work on the first panel. Notice I have three. And notice for the first two, I have not signed in. I'm just kind of coming here and starting to create. So I have comic starters I can use to kind of help with almost like a, a formatting. But I'm just gonna do kind of a quick comic. So I'm gonna choose a character. Let's do the chef. Uh, he's happy right now. So I can move him around wherever I want him to be. There you go. And then I'm gonna come here and he drops it. Oh no. Even though he had a cupcake on the first one, but whatever. All right, so I can come here and choose a pose. Um, notice I can do these types of things, like bring it to the front, flip him around. Like if I, now he's flipped. That kind of thing. I can come back and choose another character. But I'm gonna come here and choose uh, balloon prompts. So I'm going to go ahead and put this balloon prompt here and it is a one-click platform. So if I come here and click this again, it's going to be two. So keep that in mind. It's a one-click platform um, and I can get rid of that. I'm just going to come here and flip this. So now I can, oh no, no more flip. There we go. So now I can come here and type my words, whatever. And I can just keep going. There's a whole bunch of different um, things that they can use. So you can see objects and words and background colors. And I mean, they can get as creative as they want to with this. When they are done, notice it says print, email, save, and you can log in. But I'm just gonna come here and now I can either email it to my teacher or I can um, save it and then put it, let's say you're using Google Classroom or Microsoft or whatever. You can come here and save the image and then the student can turn it in. They can also print it out. But you see how quickly I did this. I mean, it's not good, but you see how quick, this is kind of cute, but you see how quickly I did this. So that is Make Beliefs Comics. So now I'm going to two voice tools. And remember guys, if you have a comment or a question or anything like that, cause I'm just quickly going through these, you can definitely do it in the uh, chat or you can unmute your mic and just talk it out. So a lot of us know reading, right? Some of us know talking comment. So I wanna show you two ways that your students, not you, but your students can use these two as voice tools. So for reading, right? This is the Read and Write toolbar. It is an extension, that's the purple puzzle piece. You do not have to use Read and Write in conjunction with Google. You can use it anywhere on the internet using Google Chrome. So if I wanted to go to um, a news website and use this, or a website about a historical figure and use this, your students can. But one of these buttons I wanna show you is Voice Note. So when you are using it with a Google product, your students can use voice notes to leave themselves notes about whatever they want to leave themselves notes about. However, you can also see the voice note. So it's a nice way for your student to communicate with you and to use their voice. So if they're reading something and they, they come across it and they're like, oh my gosh, that was amazing. These are my thoughts about this. They can quickly just use a voice note to do that.
So uh, for example, you can either highlight or not highlight. It really doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight. Um, I'm gonna come up here and use voice note. Hello, I'm using a voice note. I am really liking this Greek mythology. I think I wanna learn a little bit more about it. So I'm gonna click insert. And give it a second and it's going to insert a comment right here for me. There you go. So now you as a teacher can come listen to this. Your student can listen to it later. Hello, I'm using a voice note. So there you go. Let's see, I think we have a comment. I wanna make sure that we, that I, is reading write free? Reading write is free for certain tools on the toolbar and teachers can get a free full toolbar. So when I go back to my website and I click on reading write, it leads you to my website about reading write. You can download the extension here. This shows you the free versus paid features. And if you scroll all the way down, this is how you can get a free premium account. Um, you can get an account for reading, write, and for Equatio. So if you're a math person, Equatio is really fabulous. Um, so there you go. But for students and teachers, um, even if you don't want to get the, the free one, there are free, oh, I'm like, where's all the features? Um, there are free, some free tools from some not free tools. So you can see all the premium features and all the not premium features. But, um, so that's the answer to that question. Um, so voice note, now another way to do a voice note that is completely free so if you're like, okay, I like reading right, but maybe we don't have the paid version or I don't wanna sign up for a free paid version, that's fine. There's another extension called Talking Comment. So it is an extension and on my website, the, the box leads you straight to it. So what Talking Comment does is it gives you this little microphone. And again, you can use this anywhere on the internet. So if you're on Facebook and you're like, you know what? I don't wanna type, I wanna do a voice comment. You can do it. So your students can use this as well as you. So when I'm ready to use a voice comment, I just turned it on. So if you're like, I don't want this little microphone hanging out there, you can turn it off. But I turned it on, I'm going to click it. And now I am recording my voice to do a nice voice comment in Google. So now I'm gonna hit the check mark. Notice it says it has already linked my voice comments, I'm going to hit OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste that link wherever I want to paste it. So again, you don't have to use this just with Google Docs or you know, anything, you can, you can use it wherever on the website, as long as you're using Google Chrome because it is an extension. So I'm just going to use it just because I have this open for the sake of time. So I'm going to click, let's say I'm doing that, I'm going to click Add Comment and you don't have to highlight. And I'm going to paste my comment. And that's it. Now I have a voice note or my students have a voice note. Uh oh, I wanted to stop it. Okay, there you go. Um, so that's talking comment. And talking comment is completely free. So for example, if I come up here and bring it up, I can actually turn it off and notice that it went away. So there you go, that is talking comment. So these are two voice tools. There's another voice tool that is incorporated into Google. I think it's more for inclusion than student voice, but just know that under the tools, um, label, you do have a voice typing that can help your students use their voice to type out notes, um, not comments, but just actually type into the, um, the document itself. I don't 
necessarily have it as part of this class, but I, I can see some ways that we'll be able to use this for student voice. So if I just click this, I can just start talking and it will type whatever I am saying. So I can say the man went to the store, period. He bought milk, comma, eggs, comma, and bread, exclamation point. So there you go. Just to kind of give you another little tip. All right. Moving right along. And remember, thank you to whoever that was that left that comment. Use your chat box or come on your mic. <clears throat> Excuse me. So writing tools. We have Story Jumper and Book Creator. They're both ways to help your students create stories, create books about whatever they want to create. It. And hopefully we know that, you know, we can think a little bit outside the box when we talk about creating a book. It doesn't have to be necessarily a story. You can create a book about your, um, the steps that you went through for that, that science lab. You can create a book about um, telling people about yourself and making it culturally relevant. Tell us about your life and what's important to you. Or of course you can do it for an assignment, for a story or for a math problem or whatever. So you have two, um, <coughs> excuse me guys, two book creators that I really like. One is called Story Jumper. So I'm already logged into everything, again, just for the sake of time, but most of these things allow you to sign in with Google and Microsoft, depending, um, or you can, of course, create an account with your, um, that's not spelled right, um, create an account with your, um, with your email address. So for Story Jumper, you can either add classes and have your students create books under your class, or you can just come down here and create a book. So they do have some, um, what do you call that, templates for you to use. So if I come here and say create books, here are the templates. Now, I'm not going to lie, a lot of the templates are a little, a little kiddie. And if you're in middle and high school, it's like, oh, I'm not doing that. Um, but you can change the pictures on some of them. Or, of course, you can just start with a blank book. So I'm going to start with, let's say, All About Me. And you have the tutorial. I'm just going to say got it. So I have an all about me. Notice that it puts all these pages here. I'm not used to have my students do one of these using, of course, paper. And um, man, it would have been awesome if we could have done something like this about ourselves. Um, but you have all of these pages. Now, of course, you can add pages right here. You can take away pages. You can copy pages. You have all of your props and scenes. You can upload your own pictures as well. So there's all kinds of things you can do. And this is not a paid one by any means. Um, so there you go. This is completely free what I'm doing right now. And I can put a prop. Let's put a fish there. Because let's say I like my favorite subject is fish. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. Oh, isn't he cute? Oh, look at the cute. I'm sorry. He just caught my eye. Oh, look how cute. All right. So they can put props. And of course, these are not all the props. So they can search. And then they can put their text in however they want to put their text. They can also just come here and click to put their text as well. So when I am done, and they have all kinds of other stuff you can do, a lot of um, teachers will use this as a class project. So not like just all about me, but they'll use it as a class project and then they'll use it as a fundraiser. So definitely keep that in mind because you get, um, like if a parent comes and buys the audiobook or the ebook, you'll get proceeds from that. So a lot of teachers use this for that. Um, but you can also just come here and share it and print it. Uh oh, where's my free printing? It's like my free printing one way. I guess you can't print it anymore, but that's okay. You can come here and share the link. So there you go. I'm at the link and you can read it online. 
Oh, look at my baby. It's so awesome. All right. So um, you can still share the link for free, embed it in a website. Um, unfortunately, it looks like it can't. You used to be able to print one copy, but it looks like that has gone away. So, oh well. Um, but there you go. So that's Story Jumper. I like Book Creator as well. Uh, book, I, I feel like Book Creator is the more popular of the two because it's an app as well. But you do come here and sign in. It will sign you out like it just did because I signed in earlier. Um, you can come here and create different kinds of books for free. A teacher can have one library. So that's if you think about like one class. And you can have up to 40 books in that library for free. So once you get up to 40, you can always come here and delete a book to add another book, if that makes sense. You can have 40 in your library at one time. So I can come here and click new book. I like this thing a little bit better because you get more options to be quite honest. So you have like a comic strip book or just like a regular book. So I'm just gonna do a regular portrait book. I can come here and let's see, I have two pages right now. You have undo. I'm going to make that that. Ooh, look how cute. All right. Um, this just shows you the book. So now I can start decorating my pages. So I can have media. I have, uh, I can take stuff from my camera. I have a pen. Oh, nope, sorry clicking around too fast. Um, I can come here and put like shapes. Let's go to, I don't want to, well, I guess I, no. Yeah, I guess I can import. Let's import from, here we go. Now I have a picture of a dog, there you go. So. All kinds of stuff you can do. I feel like it gives you a little bit more freedom with what you do, um, but you know, completely up to you and your students, which ones you like better. You can add pages here. So when I'm done, I can come here. I can use the share button to either publish it online. I can download it as an ebook. I can come here and print it. And I do not have, this is not a paid account or anything like that. So I can come here and print it. Um, the other one I feel like is better if you're, and you can see your options. If you're going to do like more of a fundraiser, I think the other one is better or just more, a more simple creation tool. And then this one gives you a little bit more freedom. Participation tools. So a couple, uh, couple of tools to help your students participate and but share their voice, not just like raise their hand and answer the question. That they can actually participate in a more free fashion, if that makes sense. So we already talked about commenting on Google Drive, but a lot of my teachers don't think about having their students comment without the teacher commenting first. So know that your students can come here and comment on different things without responding to you. So just kind of keep that in mind. I like to just point that out. In your slides, so if you're using Google Slides, you can use a feature called question and answers. And this, this really just leads to driving slides. But what question and answers does is it allows your students to ask questions and do comments without speaking in front of the whole class. So if they want to participate, they just really don't want to participate in front of everybody, this is a nice tool. So when I come here to present, you have this toolbar down here that most people kind of ignore, except to, um, let me move my little Zoom toolbar out the way because it's in the way. All right, um, except to, you know, progress the slides and things like that. But I can also come here and use the question and answer feature. So once I bring it up, I can hit start new. What it does is it puts this toolbar at the top of every slide. 
So at any time, I don't care if my student came in late and all that good stuff, at any time they can come here and join us. So once I start this, notice that it says I'm only accepting questions from my, um, what do I want to say, my domain. Not a big deal if your students are logged into um, Google, into their Google account. If they're not, you can just come here and say, I want to allow it from anyone. So for example, if you went here right now and you typed a question, it would appear here. Each question has a thumbs up and thumbs down. So you can use that to tell students, hey, if you have the same question, give it a thumbs up. Um, once I've already answered that question, this is how I used it. Once I answer that question, you can thumbs down it just to say, hey, we've used that. Um, I used to tell mine, you know, don't thumbs down it unless we've already discussed it. Um, and what you can do as a teacher is once your student asks that question, you can come here and answer it without saying that they asked that question. So you're giving your students a voice, you're answering your students without putting them on the spot. So for example, if I was teaching this right now, I can pull this up and see that you asked, what is the character's name? And I can say, guys, and remember the character's name is Winn-Dixie. So I answered his question without actually pointing him out to answer the question. But if you do want to point the student out, once a question is up here, you can click display and it will display the question right here. And then y'all can answer it together. So a really cool tool. Um, if you don't want this box to show, so let's say I'm presenting right now and this is on my projector. If I don't want this to show when I pull it up, what you can do is extend your screen. So you know when you click the function key and F8 or F9, depending on your computer, you can extend your screen. I would move this one to the second screen. I'm not part of a projector right now, but I would move this one to the second screen, right? And then I would move, let me put this full screen again. And then I would have this on my screen. So that way the students aren't seeing every, you know, seeing what I'm pulling up and that kind of thing. So just keep that in mind. It is a tool to help your students um, amplify their student voice without having to be in the front of everybody. There's also a cool tool, not really for student voice, but it's just one of those things that I can't help but showing, and that's the caption button. Um, if you're presenting with the Google slide and you hit closed caption, what it will do is it will actually type what you're saying so your students can see it. I just can't help showing people this. I think it's so cool and not a lot of people use it. So I just wanted to show you that. It's not helping with student voice really, but there you go. Um, again, a nice inclusion tool. And you can come here to the little arrow. This is new with closed caption and you can put, the, put it at the top or you can change it. I have it on medium right now. You can make it bigger or smaller. So just wanted to show you that because it's a cool tool. And if I want to get rid of my question and answer, doo -doo -doo, I can just turn it off and notice it goes away. So hopefully you're hearing some cool new stuff so far. Remember, chat box or you can come on the mic. So next we have Pear Deck and Nearpod, kind of the, the same, two, two sides of the same coin. So what these two do is it allows you to ask questions in your PowerPoints, in your Google Slides. Um, it allows you to ask questions throughout the lesson and have your students participate, have your students use their voice, again, without necessarily having to use it in front of the entire class. Uh, does the closed caption stay so students can view it after the presentation was a question. No, it doesn't, but one of the tools I'm about to show you, if you, well, you're not gonna, but yeah, one of the tools I'm about to show you, you can smash with it so you can record it. So I'm gonna show you that in a second. So very good question. And I get that question all the time. And I will tell you with the PowerPoint one, for Microsoft, if you download the Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Translate, it can also do it in different languages. So you can say, while I'm talking, 
I'm sorry, I don't want to get off the off pace, but um, I just want to show y'all. So once you download Microsoft Translator for Windows, if you're using a computer or laptop, um, this box will be here. You won't see this box, but I can say always use subtitles. I can come here and tell the subtitle to be in a different language, like we were doing Germany at one of my schools. Um, and then when I come here, I'm just gonna change it to, let's say Spanish. So then when I come here and present, is going to do my subtitles in Spanish. Not available, oh, that's not good. Uh, but when it is available, I don't know why it's not, but it will do my subtitles in Spanish. So that's, uh, or whatever language you want to do it. So just a little, just a little side. Okay, let's go back. All right, so uh, Pear Deck and Nearpod um, both allow you to, it is cool, uh, both allow you to ask questions and things like that in, let me get out of presentation mode, um, throughout your slideshow. So for example, Paranet is an add-on, so you can come here. Refresh. And Nearpod, you would just go to nearpod.com to start your account. They both have free aspects and paid aspects, like most technology websites. So I'm just gonna show you Pear Deck um, right quick, and I'm not gonna, cause Nearpod really does almost the same thing. Um, you know, both of them have aspects that the other one doesn't. So you can ask your student a question using these kinds of questions, like a choice, or they have to type it, type it in, or you can use some of the ones that are already done for you. So if I want it uh, to say, summarize what we just learned, I can just click that and it will put it into my slideshow. Now I can change the picture, I can change the words. Um, the only thing you do not wanna mess with is this little like toolbar down here, but I'll do that. And then when I present, Again, I'm clicking on stuff too quickly. When I present, I'm not gonna use this button up here, I'm gonna use this button. So when I present, what is going to happen is my students will go to the website. Um, for Pear Deck is joinpd.com. So they're going to go to the website, put in the code, and then their screen on their Chromebook or whatever, their screen will be my screen. So I will be leading them through my presentation. And when they get, so you see this is kind of what, and they'll have this on every slide as I'm moving on. Um, and then when it gets to this slide, they're gonna have a box right here to type in. So they can actually participate. I can see everybody's answers. I can display them if I want to, all kinds of goodness. So that's Pear Deck and Nearpod. Definitely give it a look um, because they're really good with letting students express themselves that may not want to express themselves, may not want to be pointed out um, in front of everybody. So there you go. Video tools, most of us know the almighty Flipgrid. Um, so Flipgrid is an amazing tool to let your students amplify their student voice. I feel like they were one of the ones that either brought out the new student voice movement or at least amplified it. See what I did there? Um, I also have a link to using it in the classroom and using Screencastify in the classroom. So with Flipgrid, you create a grid that resources button that was right on the side, that's a really good button, guys. So you create a grid, you can tell people, um, I always delete the ones I do for training, but I'm not gonna go again too far into this, but what you do is you can tell your students to do a video to answer your question. So I did a question about what is your favorite tech tool and all these people responded. So I can come here and make it a private um, comment. I can say I need to approve them first before they show up on the grid. I can download them if I need to. I can delete it. Um, you can make these private to where even your other students can't see it, just you can. But the power of Flipgrid is really having your students collaborate as well. So I can say, hey, I want you to go look at three students' Flipgrids and leave them a response. You can also do things like grid pals where 
maybe someone in Canada is reading the same book as I am and I want my two classes to communicate with each other. Um, there's so much stuff you can do with Flipgrid now, guys. And if you click on using it in the classroom, one of the questions I received is about shy students. Ta-da! Um, if you don't know Jernay, you wanna know Jernay. She's amazing. She's amazing as a person, but she's also amazing as a flip red supernova. Um, so she has a really nice blog about tips for um, for your shy. Oh, where did it go? Oh, I must have clicked on the wrong thing. Uh, tips for your shy student. Okay, I guess I need to click right here. Um, so you want to look at that because there's some really, really nice tips. For example, if you don't know all the upgrades that Flipgrid has recently done, um, you can use the whiteboard. So they don't have to record their, their face anymore and they can still get it done. So just a whole bunch of stuff you want to look at for that. And that's what Flipgrid does. It allows your students to create videos in response. You can say how long the video is and all that kind of stuff as well. Screencastify is another way that you can have your students create videos. It is an extension. You can create 10 minute videos for free. It used to be you can create 50 10 minute videos. Now it says you can create, you can hold on to five at a time um, for free. I did put in a couple of questions to the company to just clarify that a little bit more, clarify the new updates that they did. Um, so I don't have those responses just yet. I just said that over the weekend. Um, so, but there you go. So you can use Screencastify to record your tab. So you know when you go to um, like YouTube and you, you look up, how do I do Google Drive? And they go, today I'm gonna show you Google Drive. And they start moving their mouse. So you can see where they click. That's a screencast. And that's what you can create with this. So your students can create screencasts or they can just record their webcam only. So you have, you see how it's pretty much a simple tool, right? Um, you can have all of your videos saved directly to Google Drive and then your students can, um, it used to be a paid feature to download them as MP4s, but now they're saying that that's not a paid feature anymore. So you can download it as an MP4 or your students can just use the share link in Google Drive and share the video. So just think of all the possibilities. And that's why I like this using it in the classroom because there's so many ways that you can use Screencastify in the classroom. So this is just like a treasure trove of um, ways to use it in webinars and all kinds of stuff. Look, to use it for formative assessment. I mean, come on, it's so cool. Um, so there you go. You also have Adobe Spark and Wii Video. These are ways to create real videos or to record slideshows, like you can put pictures in it, you can do book trailers and just anything that you may want to, um, you may want to use. Um, I had a question about Screencastify, it's, it's 10 minutes long for free, but again, they just update it. So I don't know if when it says unlimited length, uh, no, it says unlimited something. Um, I want them to clarify if now you can do those five videos at any length or is it still five minutes? So I'm still getting clarification on that. Powtoon and My Simple Show are ways to create animated videos with nice little characters that look like these. Um, and they'll, you know, talk and move around. So there you go. Powtoon and My Simple Show are both free for certain things. So like certain characters will be paid um, to download a Powtoon, you have to pay, but you can share the link and see it online, um, different things like that. So you wanna, you can look at these for your students to create animated videos to express anything that they wanna express and um, use their student voice. And then collaboration tools, there's so many collaboration tools. I really like the Common Sense Education um, list. Some of my favorites are on here. I also like that they tell you the grade level and if it's paid or free. So if it's paid, you're like, I, I just can't do pay and I won't even look at it. Uh, VoiceThread used to be awesome, but now it's all paid. Well, it's still awesome, but it's, it's all paid. Now it used to be free. Um, one of my favorites is Padlet. 
So there's a whole bunch on here. Um, I do love some Padlet. <laughs> so what Padlet does is, again, it allows your students to use their voice and comment. Um, it's almost like post-its, if you want to think about it. You don't have to use the cork board background, but um, you can think about it. I'm trying to find one that has stuff in it. There you go. So you see how they can communicate, they can put something, they can um, comment and things like that. So it's a really nice collaboration tool. And you don't have to have it in rows. Like, I, like you can have it where they just ping, ping it anywhere. Um, but I, I really like Palette. Palette is a nice collaboration tool. But you have a whole bunch more. Some of these I have never even heard of. So definitely take a look at this. We want to try to use anything in the classroom that allows our students to use their voices, right? So those collaboration tools is a ni our nice um, way to do that. So in wrapping up, you have access to this website to come back and get more tools. And student voice is so hot right now that you can definitely even Google and find things about student voice. So we do have some questions that I wanna get to. So one of the questions says, I want students to share their experiences and hobbies with each other in order to help build background knowledge for themselves and others. And I would even venture to say, make your classroom more culturally relevant. Any ideas on how I can get started? They're already doing the work. I just want them to share it. So those collaboration tools, I think will be really, really cool, like Padlet and some of the other ones that are on the list. Does anyone else have an answer to this or are you doing this that you want to hop on the mic and let us know or put it in the chat box and while we're typing or unmuting ourselves i will put the link back up for you to sign in so if you came in late and you did not sign in you don't want to go anywhere because you want to get that certificate to say that you were here. Okay, last chance. Does anybody want to discuss this one? Or you may just be happy with the collaboration tools. All right, so let's look at the next one. When I use Flipgrid with students, they become camera shy. And I think I just answered this. Do you have any strategies to combat this? I've tried having them put post signals on the camera and having them pretend they're talking to their teacher. I will say that Flipgrid also has post it notes, electronic post it notes you can use. Um, so that's something you can do. Um, someone said that you can use Google to share. Absolutely. Um, for that first question about how to get your students to share stuff with each other. Absolutely. Of course, I mean, Google, I feel like is the OG uh, with collaboration. So absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Google Keep is another Google um, tool that you can use. So there you go. So if you have an answer for this one, and then we'll go to the last one so I can make sure to get that, um, that link up before we end. I want students to share books they have finished reading with others using Flipgrid. How do I get the word out? So how do you, when you say get the word out, I'm imagining you mean like how do you market it? Like how do you tell your students that this is what we're doing? Um, I'm guessing if it's, it's any clarification on this, please. Okay, he said yeah, uh, or she said yeah, sorry. Um, so I would say it depends on, how you get the word out for assignments. Um, okay, so uh, Ms. Ringo said for the second question, she has students use a divider and it gives them more privacy. I also have them read things to get them used to, ish to using Flipgrid. So like um, instead of them just like sitting in front of the camera with nothing, have them read a book to the camera and things like that to get them used to using it. Thank you so much, beautiful ideas. And if you look online and Pinterest and all these different places, um, they have teachers who are doing stuff like they'll get a cardboard box 
and some bubble bubble wrap and put inside the cardboard box and then they'll use like a book um a book stand and put the ipad on top of a book stand in the box and it it like it creates a little bit more privacy and it takes away noise in the classroom while your students are recording um i would also say you can do things like have a recording corner or something that may be a little bit further away from the students if your classroom is that big or if you have a hallway that you can have your students go into you know, if they're okay with being in the hallway by themselves um but you know like little things like that i've seen a teacher buy a blue sheet and she put the blue sheet on the floor in the corner and that was the recording ocean and high schoolers were like i want to go to the recording ocean so just <laughs> anything like that you may be able to do just to create either to create privacy or to create the illusion of privacy may help um so how do we get the word out guys how do we get the word out with our last couple minutes how do we get the word out when we want to do something like this i would i would it depends on your situation because social media is a nice way to get the word out if your classroom has you know a twitter account or um a snapchat account or whatever, our instagram account um using that to get the word out any way that you're like if you're using class dojo or anything like that to get the word out even home so the parents from that, i don't know what grade level we're talking about um using seesaw that was a suggestion from the chat box any way that you can market it i mean sometimes good old-fashioned flyers hanging up works most of the time they don't um but sometimes sometimes they do um i would also connect with like my library um whether it be i don't know how big you want this to go like the public library or your your lo your school library and see like how can they help you get the word out about this because i think it would be really really cool um so yeah I, I would say just kind of your regular how do you market an event so if you go and google it i would google like how do i market a program that i'm trying to do um so all those different ways to market and the best marketing tool are your students using that word of mouth um so having you know trying to get students involved and telling them to go get their friends involved maybe giving them incentives to do it and that way it kind of grows and then you can stop the incentives because it'll be just be popular by itself so i would say anything like that will help um all right guys we are pretty much done so this is the evaluation it is a free webinar so this is the only thing i ask you to do is to leave me a comment on my website and if you read if you um signed in earlier i'm going to send you this link as well in the email but if you just go to my website some of you're already there just click on comments you can do a comment using flipgrid or you can use just do a written comment you don't have to do a video um so there you go you can uh leave a comment on my website please and i'm going to bring the screen here to show and then i'm gonna bring it back but um this is how you can contact me so if you want to take a picture of this or anything like that i'll just leave this up to the count of five and then i'll go back to the sign in screen so you can sign in one two three four five all right and i can always bring this back up too just put it in the chat box all right so i'm going to go back to the first screen this is where you go to sign in this link educatoralexander.com slash sign in all together um if you sign in you're going to be on the email that i'm about to sing in about 10 minutes uh you're very welcome thank you guys thank you thank you thank you, you are very very welcome um i'm going to sing a, uh, an email in about 10 minutes so at 12 10 that's not quite 10 minutes but 12 10 i'm going to send an email to everyone who signed in in the email it's going to have your certificate for coming today it's going to have the link to um the the resource it's going to have a link for the commenting it's going to have a link to my youtube channel because this will be on my youtube channel as of tomorrow 
you'll probably be there today. But as of tomorrow, it'll be on my YouTube channel. And remember to sign up for the newsletter. I send one a month, so the one for this month's already going out. Excuse me, but you can see the newsletter on my website. Just click newsletter. So thank you guys so much. Thank you for spending your time with me. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful rest of your Saturday. I am going to leave the sign up open until 12.10. After 12.10, it will come down. I will leave this room open as well until 12.10. So you can go ahead and get the link or get whatever you need it. If you have any questions for me or anything, you can go ahead and put it in the chat. Or of course, you can unmute your mic and we can discuss. I'm going to leave everything open until 12.10 and then everything will shut down and you'll get the email. Thank you guys so much.